if you want to get started drawing, this is for you. If you want to go beyond just a pencil and a paper, you need a paint stick, charcoal pencils, 220 grit sandpaper, a ruler, and paper. Usually you want it to be around 50 or 60 pounds and I use 18 by 24 inch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the sandpaper onto the paint stick. So with the utility knife, we're gonna cut a piece of sandpaper that's just a little bit thinner than our paint stirrer. Now be really careful when you use the utility knife because it's probably one of the dangerous, most dangerous tools you'll ever use. I bet you have even more control with a hacksaw but uh, I've known people who've lost their thumbs using this, so be super, super careful. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm basically gonna use that to determine the size of the next piece, because I'm gonna do front and back on this. And I actually have an unfinished wooden floor that I'm cutting on, but you can use a cutting board, you can use, uh, I've seen those flat rubber cutting boards, but you, you don't wanna cut this on something that you're gonna ruin. I'm just using some Gorilla Glue, and I realized later I used a little bit too much. I, you want it to get to the sides. You don't want the edges to be, you know, peeling up, but you also don't want the glue to spew out <laughs> to the side of the, the wood, and I'll, you'll see why in a second. I just uh, kind of smushed it around a little because I wanted to make sure that it was flat. And that's not gonna dry like that. I'm gonna have to flip it around and do the other side and then put something heavy on top to make sure that it can dry properly. If anybody has you know, advice for me about gluing, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, I did my best. And that paint stick, by the way, you can get them from free at Lowe's. Like there's just a bucket of them you can grab. I mean, don't grab the whole bucket, just grab, you know, one or two. And that's what it should look like. And uh, now I need something heavy to keep it in place. And I put my really old paint briefcase on it. But so I learned uh, do one side at a time because I just completely glued this to my floor and I could not get it off. I had to use the uh, utility knife to peel it. Yeah, it is completely locked on there. And that's what I ended up with. And I mean, it's definitely good enough. It'll it'll do the trick, but be more careful than I did was. And now I'm going to peel the wood off of this pencil. Oh, you want to be careful though. I like to keep the blade really long and Basically, it allows you to put less pressure because it is so easy to break these. So this is how they used to do it in the Renaissance. Uh, now we just stick it in a pencil sharpener, but there are no pencil sharpeners long enough for the type of pencil that we're going for. So you're going to start shaving off maybe two inches at least of wood. And yeah, you want to be really careful to not put pressure on the, the charcoal part of the pencil. and. I actually normally use Conti pencils, Conti à Paris H, Pierre Noir, but those are harder to find. It takes longer for them to be ordered. And I'm not doing a very good job getting my pencil shavings into my uh, bag. But I promise you, you will break a lot of these pencils. So buy a, buy a lot of them. This doesn't look very difficult, but it actually is a skill. And to not to put pressure on the wood, but not the pencil, it's so much harder than it looks. And this is a little technique that I made when you get near the end to really make the wood smooth so you don't have jagged edges. And uh, it, you'll see later why that helps. But yeah, this is how they did it in the Renaissance. They had very long pencils and it allowed for a lot of different line qualities. And uh, I'll do a demonstration. You'll see how that works. Sorry for the blurriness here. And uh, yeah, that's what you should look like before you start sanding. That looks good. So be sure to aim better than I did because all my pencil This is probably the, the main floor. place you're gonna break your pencil. But, so this is a technique too. You roll it between your fingers as you move the pencil back and forth. 
I'm doing it very quickly, but if you look closely, you can see that I'm rolling it. And that's because I'm trying to get a nice, even shape all the way around. I don't want to favor one side and get a flat edge. You're looking to get a perfectly round cylinder. And you want the wood to be a direct line to the tip of the pencil. Like, you see how it's angling in? We want to shave the black part of the pencil until it's completely flat to the point. And that's another technique I like to use. Uh, you, can, you can basically make the pencil go back and forth directly on itself, hold it horizontally while you move it horizontally, or you can hold it a little bit diagonally. But that's what it should look like when you're done. That's a good looking pencil. Okay, so now that we have our pencil, I want to show you the kind of lines you can get. The reason this is so valuable is because you can have a line that, look, look how thick that line is, or you can have it this Okay, so the, the first thing to learn is how to draw a straight line. You wanna go from point to point. You wanna literally put a dot and dot, and you wanna have your pencil here, but look here, and then just put your pencil there. And the way I'm drawing is you want, you want this to be an extension of your thumb. So you wanna hold it like this. You're holding it in this finger and balancing on these, on your nails and writing. And so you draw vertical lines this way and you draw horizontal lines this way and diagonal lines this way. And it, you start as light as you can and you build up strength and remember you you want to go point to point. So the first thing to do is learn how to hold your pencil. And the second thing to do is learn how to draw a straight line. Later, you'll be, we'll, we'll, value will come in, but it's very important. Learn how to sharpen your pencil. Learn how to ride on your fingertips. And that's, of course, so you don't smudge it. Look, if, I am, if I'm riding on my palm, you're going to smudge your work and get it, get it on your hand. If you go like this, Okay, you smudge too, but a little bit less. So the important thing is go from point to point and learn, just put your pencil there. Look, I overshot the mark a little, doesn't matter. Start again, put your point here and look down at this dot. I'm looking and I put my pencil there. Look, that was closer. And I try again and again and again and again. And you can just make pages of straight lines and I promise you, this is one of the most important things, especially if you want to learn how to draw the way like the Renaissance masters did with uh, gesture drawing and, and loose shapes and uh, beautiful line quality. So just practice drawing straight lines, practice drawing diagonals point to point, practice, I mean, you can practice circular lines, but practice keeping it very thin and you can even, if you want to keep sharpening your pencil, you can draw the lines like this. And that will keep it very, very thin. And it will also sharpen your pencil as you go. So you can draw, you can also try drawing this way. Now I'm going to do a demonstration. I'm still going point to point. I draw where I'm drawing before I draw the line in the middle. And this is going to be a gesture drawing. And gesture drawing is, you can contrast it to a more measured, more analytical drawing. Gesture is when you're trying to just get the essence of the shapes and the general movement of whatever it is that you're drawing. And here I'm drawing an eye. I'm just doing it from imagination because I've drawn probably a million, million eyes in my time. And I'm starting very light, as you can see. I'm building up slowly and this is gonna all happen pretty fast because like I said it's a gesture drawing and the point of this isn't to have a measured perfect drawing it's basically to get ideas down but this is just I'm gonna give you some samples of the line qualities you can get see how I'm starting to lay in some value here this is also good for um, I recommend doing iterative drawing I'm not even really sure how I would pronounce that but 
<laughs> what it means is do a drawing, don't have it take forever, and then do it again. Like look at what you've done, analyze, see how you can do it better, and then try again. I recommend that way more than trying to get one thing perfect and spending hours and hours and hours on something. And maybe there aren't as many as perfectionists as I'm imagining, but I, I tend towards the perfectionism and it's taken a lot of work to get that out of me. And you can see now I'm building some, I'm getting some darkness and some shadows here. And I, I probably went too dark too quickly. And notice I'm drawing a horizontal. I'm connecting the eyebrow to the top of the eyelid to the corner of the brow. Uh, basically, your drawing is going to look significantly better if you can find connections and relationships. See that little circle I just drew? So if I draw one thing, I want to connect it to something else. That's kind of the idea here. If you put, make a mark, continue the mark until it connects to something else. So now I'm doing under the eyelid. The, we're already start. You can already tell this is an eye. And that little part that when you're tired gets really dark and bulging, that's, you can, that's a significant portion of your eyeball. So you really want to echo the circle of the eye. And actually, I'm doing it there as well. See how I brought that from one side to the other? That's what makes it feel unified when you draw things together that are on opposite sides of the page. I'm trying to leave a, a little highlight. I'll have to come back to that because I got it a little bit too dark. But the eye is, is round and almost always you have a catch light. You have this little glint in the eye. It's either a reflection of the window or a reflection of the flash. But our eyes are wet and you usually, near the darkest dark in the eye, you're going to have the lightest light. I'm already feeling this is this is pretty much done for a gesture drawing. A gesture drawings, like I said, they're not meant to be extremely realistic. They're meant to get an idea down on paper. Or just express an emotion. They're, it's It's very expressive to be gestural. I notice I changed the way I'm holding my pencil. I'm holding it the way we typically write. And that's because I want a really precise line to differentiate the iris from the white of the eye. And I'm actually darkening the white of the eye right now because I want the bottom lid to... The bottom part of the lid is going to catch more light than the bottom part of the eyeball. And that's just me with a little white charcoal filling that highlight in. And there you go. That's a gesture drawing with some thin lines and some value lines. So that's how you sharpen a pencil and draw straight lines. And you really can't practice that enough. It'll help you with everything you draw in the future, whether it's gesture drawing or something that you're gonna spend more time on. So my name is Kelsey Landon, and you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Sculptrix. And uh, my Patreon is Sculptrix as well. Thanks.